Marcion, and I don't know why this scratches. There's a scratching sound on here. It bugs me too. But Marcion of Sinope. Uh, this is my video about him, and some of these conclusions. Some of the what I say are my conclusions. Marcion said to be from Pontus. In fact, Tertullian. Tertullian. Tertullian and Origen are some strange characters because Origen, even if you disagree with him, or this is how I, I react to it, Origen, even if you, even though I disagree with a lot of his stuff, he seems like a, not a vicious character. Tertullian, I'm glad I agree with him on some points because he'd be a nasty adversary. And in fact, the first Latin father, which is Tertullian, he's kind of a dick, even a Marcion. I mean, I know that's, you know, how could you, you know, speak too low of Marcion? But he, he has a scorched earth policy, basically. He goes after his birthplace and equates uh, Pontus with Sarmatia and... Scythia describes their women as Amazons, you know, not. Where is this thing? I mean, just beginning to read against heresies. I've read this three times, but when you begin to read it, you're like, whoa, 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 what? You know, like, hold back on. Their women, not by their sex softened to modesty, they uncover the breast. From which they suspend their battle axes and prefer warfare to marriage. In their climate, too, is the same rude nature. In the day, <coughs> in daytime is never clear and sun is never cheerful, and the sky is uniformly cloudy. Really, in northern Anatolia, on the sea, the black on the shore of the Black Sea, that's what it's like. He's describing Amazons, which are supposed to be from again Sarmatia or. Uh, the western part of Scythia, <laughs> and I mean, really, the first century there were women, or the second century there were still Amazons walking around with battle axes. I don't think so. But anyways, we see a letter, one of Paul's earliest letters, that's against Judaizers to Galatia, and Galatia sometimes incorporates Pontus. No matter how you want to look at it, it's at least right next to uh, the area of Pontus. Sometimes, depending on people's, I don't know, view or whatever of Galatia, it can incorporate Pontus or Pontus can incorporate parts of Galatia. And people talk about, is you know, was Galatians written to southern Galatia or northern Galatia, it doesn't matter because Galatia, all of it, was the Celts. And since we know the letters of Paul were circulated, it's going, since it's to the Galatians, the, the Celts of Anatolia would take it, oh, this is to all of us. And we know that from Paul's letter, there were already Judaizers that got there before him. Now, it's said that Marcion's father is what is a priest or maybe a bishop I forget um, so could it be that Marcion is descended from the family who the Judaizers first got to and you know caused tension in the church and then you had Paul that's why Marcion when he's uh, reading Paul or he could have been a fan of Paul all along um, I mean his father could have uh, been one of the people who was a recipient of Paul's letter to Galatians and received it gladly, or he could have been an enemy, but there's nothing to really show that uh, Marcion was at odds with his father, just later on at odds with the church. Which, naturally, you could see this, if, if Marcion has, a, has a, a love of Paul, he idolizes Paul, and he believes in the gospel, he went to 
he was Rome, and he donated vast amounts of money. He made his wealth in shipping, uh, which that's not a contradiction. His father, if his father went shipping and a clergyman, that just like if you were a clergyman and you were married, it wouldn't contradict. But then you have the Roman church, the church in Rome, which is. I'm going to step out of my orthodox self for a second and go to the, the critical research of early Christianity. Was a Judaized seat. I mean, Shepherd of Hermas, First Clement, uh, they were big on Jerusalem and, and this kind of stuff. Goes there. He sees the God of the Old Testament, which was probably foreign to him because Paul never forced people to become Jews before they were Christians. And especially in Pontus, if you have the letter of Galatians, I mean, just check out the letter of Galatians. It seems to be antinomian and completely almost endorsing license. This is why the rest of Paul's letters, he pulls back on this as if he, his letter to Romans is almost an apology for Galatians. He's making sure that people, if you read Galatians, it I'll just say it is an antinomian work. And then, whether he intended to be or not, it comes across that way. I don't think it was meant to be, and I think you can look at it in a not. I don't see it myself as an antinomian work, but it it pretty much is. And then you get Paul, you know, uh, speaking to the Romans, say, you know, trying to show more balance, you know. it's But again... He's not writing Galatians as a treatise on faith. He's just addressing the issue of the Judaizers. So this is the climate Marcion grows up in. It could be that they basically tried to stay away from anything referencing Judaism. To, uh, so the one that he grew up with was a very Pauline, uh, Galatian-centered gospel or faith or religion. And I have a lot of sympathy for Marcion. So Marcion hears this stuff uh, from the Romans. I don't know if it was the city of Rome, but anyways, people coming from Rome. You know, they're, they're, these are Clement, or Clement, the first epistle of Clement, and the um, the. Shepherd of Hermas and possibly the Apocalypse of John and the Gospel, the Gospel of Matthew, that was very big in Rome at the time, in hand and talking to him. Well, he flips out. I don't like the Gospel of Matthew that much, but it's got too much vital stuff in there to throw it away, which is probably why it survived. But there's some stuff in Matthew that's even too embarrassing for the Judaizers that they couldn't throw out. So it's, I mean, to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that wouldn't be in a Judaized text. Why is it in Matthew? So we get some of the original, a lot of probably closer to the original sayings in Matthew for some things. Others, I think, were intentionally distorted by the church that produced Matthew. That's a whole different can of worms. Uh, so he sees these things, and he goes, eh, that's not the gospel I know. We got our gospel straight from Paul. We didn't go through fleshly people. Paul didn't meet Christ in the flesh. He he, he, he had a, an apocalypse. He had an epiphany of the resurrected Christ, the better Christ than these who misunderstand him in his lifetime. You know, this is the Gnostic idea picking up of, what the hell is it? Why am I going to listen to Peter or James? This guy, you know, oh yeah, they might have known him in his life or grown up with him or been his family. But Paul knew the resurrected Christ where, you know, you didn't have that man Jesus, you know, uh, the, the humanity of, that was Jesus, you know, screwing stuff up for this, you know, perfect Christ, yeah, that which was divine, which screws the idea of Christ up and doesn't recognize logos and humanity. But anyways, uh, he freaks out when he hears about the Old Testament God and hears the Christians, uh, sees the Christians revering uh, what he sees as Jewish scripture, you know, the Old Testament, 
to the same degree as they do the new, or at least um, at least hold it in high esteem and equate the God of Moses with the God of Christ. And he says, no, 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 and starts teaching this other stuff. And the church says, here's your money back. Um, thanks, but no thanks. Have a nice time. Don't come back. Don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, excommunicates him. Marcion sees that uh, the, the epistles of Paul have Jewish stuff in them. And that, you know, Paul is constantly, you know, referencing the Jews and that uh, Luke's gospel has this, you know, Jewish stuff in it. And that it's uh, not 100% spiritual, that, you know, Christ is a man and you have all this human stuff in it. He says, well, they added that crap. It wasn't in there. Uh, quoting, you know, quoting the Old Testament. That's that's an evil God. This God, I mean, he's a Christian who read stuff from the Old Testament and heard about the Old Testament God and goes, oh my God. Kind of like many people do today when they hear about the genocide, you know, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, you know, Adonai Elohim commanding the, you know, the the extermination of Canaan or these very harsh punishments and he sees Christianity kind of like many nominal Christians today well the old law that was harsh that was the Old Testament that doesn't matter anymore which yeah it's not over if it's fulfilled or however you want to put it um, that's just that and that doesn't apply anymore and well we have the New Testament and, you know just be good to other people and that's Christianity Kind of like that view, but Marcion is sharper than that. So he says, you know, all your Gospels are corrupted. Mine is the Apostolicon, the Gospel of the Savior, the Gospel of Jesus, or the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, and that's a edited version of Luke. Uh, people can debate, well, was it the original version of Luke? And I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that he was an edited version. But he was thinking, this all, you know, this Judaism, Judaizers had seeped in and deceived. I mean, if you, if you grew up on the Epistle of Galatians, you're going to be paranoid about Judaizers. Right? I think in Galatians, the only Old Testament character, if I remember correctly, is Abraham. I remember not everybody equated Abraham with being a Jew. Abraham was just the first monotheist. He was fine. He came before any of the Mosaic Law. Not so that uh, mountain god, you know, the evil Jewish mountain god, gave him all these traps with all these laws and this and that. It might also be an early, I, an early view of documentary hypothesis. This could also be reading Genesis, first chapter, and going, "Oh, that's that's the that's the grand god who you know who created all this stuff and be fruitful and multiply and this and that." And then you see this Yahweh walking through the garden he doesn't know where adam and eve are he uh he he put this tree of good and evil this knowledge of good and evil uh there the serpent actually in the gnostic view liberated them and then what did god do well did the tree of knowledge of good and evil did they die that day no they didn't die that day god just restricted the tree of life from them and kicked them out of the Garden of Eden and then you know, flooded. So they screwed up. So it, there could have been uh, influence from that, people just seeing that, because the Gnostics, like the Sethians, tend to mention all the stuff about the snake and crap like that. Or is it the old fights? I forget. I think it's the old fights that mean old fights that mean snake versus old fights. Uh, so Marcion, he constructs the Gospel of Savior, which is the Evangelicon, if I'm saying that rightly. And I couldn't find through any of this crap, and I don't want to go reread re Tertullian. I mean, it's like having, it's like something written by Bill O'Reilly. It's, it's what it is, like reading, it's like reading a transcript from the O'Reilly back, and just a bitter guy. Yeah, you might, you might, you're probably right, but it's, you're an ass. Um, of what I remember Marcion's canon is, it's the Paul's, uh, his Apostolicon, his Pauline, which were only Pauline work, uh, the Epistle to the Alexandrians, the Epistle to the Laodiceans, the Epistle to the Galatians, 
Okay, so Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Philemon, and okay, Philippians in there. Now, uh, Colossians and Ephesians could be Laodiceans and Alexandrians. Alexandrians. There is a letter, an epistle to the Laodiceans and an epistle to the Alexandrians that still exists in the Latin church, but they don't accept this because it's it seems to be reconstructed from just other verses from various Pauline letters. And I believe it's the Epistle of Ephesians that they think is the Epistle to the Laodiceans because it was a circulated letter and it was supposed to go there. So Marcion creates this evan Evangelicon and Apostolicon, which kicks off the uh, race for the new, for the canon, for the New Testament, basically. You see, he, what he did caused a New Testament to be formed, caused the 27 books that we see in the West today. Um, Now, those, the ten that I gave are kind of a, a guess, kind of a fudge on it, but he didn't have the pastorals, which makes sense. And You know what? I'm going to stop this here and have a part two, because I'm afraid it might get too long. Uh, so this is part one, let's say, of Marcin of Sinope, the adversary. And in fact, the first Latin father, which is Tertullian, He's kind of a dick, even a Marcion. I mean, I know that's, you know, how could you, you know, speak too low of Marcion? But he, he has a scorched earth policy, basically. He goes after his birthplace and equates uh, Pontus with Sarmatia and Scythia. Describes their women as... Amazons, you know, not Marcion said to be from Pontus. In fact, Tertullian 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 and Origen are some strange characters because Origen, even if you disagree with him, or this is how I, I have reacted Marcion, and I don't know why this scratches, there's a scratching sound on here, it bugs me too but Marcion of Sinope, uh, this is my video about him, and some of these conclusions, some of the what I say are my conclusions. So, Origen, even if you, even though I disagree with a lot of his stuff, he seems like a not a vicious character. Tertullian. I'm glad I agree with him on some points because he'd be a nasty